All right, Josh, there's another uh, very important news topic that we have to break for here. Breaking news. There is an alleged townhome strip club. <laughs> Neighbors are calling the cops, and the owner says, he didn't do nothing wrong, man. What's the problem? Well, I didn't I mean, do nothing wrong. That's just a uh, good business practice, man. I do you mean, have a strip club in your neighborhood, Josh, that's like this? <laughs> <laughs> here let's listen to the story here take a listen yeah, here. yeah listen. i want to see this parties every weekend it's been going on for months despite endless calls to 311 911 code enforcement and more and we should warn some viewers that some of the images and the content that you're going to see could be graphic abc7 news i team reporter melanie woodrow is here with the story you'll see only on seven melanie larry and karina residents tell me if they didn't see this party house with their own eyes they wouldn't believe it. Mm. The I-team got a look at what's happening Thursday through Saturday night from after midnight until the early morning hours, both outside and inside these parties. I also spoke with the person hosting them about what's going on. Oh, yeah. Exotic you. dancers, alcohol, and stacks of ones. Before Fresh Promotions, private party was up and running on Camille Circle in San Jose. Neighbors say they heard construction during the middle of the night for months. What they were building I had no idea. So we called the general manager and he thought maybe it was them lifting weights. <laughs> Andy Benzinger is laughing because he believes he now knows what was being built. Residents provided the ABC 7 News I team with pictures of empty exercise and dance pole boxes thrown out in a communal garbage. Once construction stopped, the music started. It's not Mozart. It's strip club music. Neighbors say they found video from inside the parties by clicking on a map within the Snapchat app. All of these videos public, most of them too explicit to show here. It's literally every weekend. Benzinger is an attorney whose relative lives on Camille Circle. He's now representing approximately 12 units. This is an unlicensed commercial activity right in the middle of a group of townhomes. It's flabbergasting. It's it's unbelievable. ABC 7 News obtained video of people coming and going from the complex during the middle of the night. At the base of the stairs, individuals wearing shirts that say security, escorting them to the party by flashlight. It's for me. I don't want to live like this. It's why this resident agreed to talk with me, but asked me not to show her face because of concerns for her safety. For months, she says she called 311, 911, and even police directly. When you're calling, what are you telling the 911 call operator? I'm telling them that there is a strip club um, <laughs> at this particular unit. And what is the response of the 911 call operator when you say there's a strip club <laughs> going on at this unit? Basically, they take the call and they tell me that they will deal with it. But she says despite her efforts, every weekend the parties continue. Did police come out for each of those calls? I have no idea. The IT asked San Jose police to look up several case numbers provided to us by the resident. A spokesperson said they were either noise or music complaints. I asked further about three calls to 911 in one weekend, one on August 18th at 4.42 a.m. A spokesperson told the IT police did not respond to that 911 call because a supervisor requested the information be turned over to the Bureau of Investigations for follow-up. Police said another call on August 19th at 4.58 a.m. was solely a music complaint and there was no police response. In a final call to 911 on August 20th at 4.08 a.m., San Jose police said communications personnel called the reporting party back for an update on the noise disturbance prior to dispatching officers. When unable to reach the caller for a status update, the call was canceled. In a follow-up email to ABC7 News, a spokesperson referred to the noise disturbance as a low-priority call. There isn't the sense of urgency that I think this kind of a situation is entitled to. A San Jose police spokesperson told the I-team public information officers and other department personnel were not available for interviews. By email, the spokesperson told the I-team SJPD was first made aware of the allegations in early August and that an investigation into what they call the illegal business is open and ongoing. But the person hosting the parties told me he's not doing anything illegal. I called the number listed on the invitations and spoke with someone for 22 minutes who identified himself as fresh. He told me the private parties are for <laughs> friends and family. And that mom who lived in the townhome recently passed away. He denied charging money to get in or for bottle service and told ABC 7 News that 200 for bottles referred to tokens, not dollars. He said the exotic dancers are entertainers, family and friends, 
not employees. He called these security guards his brothers who work a graveyard <laughs> shift at club yeah. and that if you're outside, it's because they're smoking. If it quacks like a duck, <laughs> walks like a duck, it's a duck. It's a strip club. In addition to SJPD, residents filed complaints with other agencies. San Jose's code enforcement deputy director told the I-Team code enforcement has opened a case to investigate any potential zoning, building, or municipal code violations within its purview. Also, that it is coordinating with SJPD on the issues at the town home. Then coordinate. Take care of this problem now before it gets worse. The Department of Alcoholic Beverage Control told the I-Team it could not confirm or deny if it's investigating, but reiterated that it looks into every complaint received. Also that the sale of alcoholic beverages in California without an appropriate license is a misdemeanor violation of the business and professions code. An attorney for the homeowners association told me he had no comment. Enforcement aside, a person who told me she's been helping the landlord said an eviction process is underway, but also takes time. Texting me, quote, we are doing everything we can to get these people out ASAP while we are waiting for the court clerk to process the paperwork. An effort the party's host may be aware of. When I shared neighbors' concerns, he apologized and offered to keep the music down. He also said he expects to leave within the next 20 days. Thursday afternoon, a sheriff's deputy walked up the stairs and placed an eviction notice on the window, giving the people inside until September 6th to leave or be forced out. In the meantime, people who live here are at their wits end. I really feel traumatized by it. This is not safe. It's dangerous. It only takes one time for things to go terribly wrong here. So whoever is inside has until next Wednesday to leave the premises and we'll have to wait and see what happens. Big holiday weekend. Mm -hmm. So the, the question here is, will they have some parties to sort of close out the weekend? I'll talk to <laughs> residents and find out. It's pretty bold just to, to do this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm going to say all that there, Anchor Guy. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. We're going to talk about it. Uh, uh, well, okay, so look, there's a, there's a lot that I want to say. There's a lot. There's a lot going on. There's so Go many. Ahead. I was yeah. like, that's – and then another thing happened. Oh, but uh, first off, it's old news, so we have to find out because, like, you know, that, that uh, date has passed that they're talking about. But, oh, man, Josh, what are your first thoughts there? Because I can well, tell you. First initial thoughts are, uh, number one, if they need to give me an address. I think the show, we need to go <laughs> have, investigate. Have you ever been to a party like that? Oh, many parties. They weren't strip clubs. They were just parties that uh, turned into, you know, turned out. They had no, but you've escorts. never been to a party like that. No. I'll tell you. No. I have. Really? There's, there's a house. And I almost said the address. Should I say the address? Or, is it still around or? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Really? Well, okay. okay so I don't know if it is. <laughs> There's a house in uh, Los Angeles that surrounds, like, one side of it is a school, and the other side of it is a bunch of businesses. It's like one lonely house, and it's bushes in the front. Like, you wouldn't know that it is a huge drug party after hours nightclub house party every Saturday night where you got to pay $10 to get in and it's an open elite and everybody's doing God knows what there, there are bonfires and loud music and fornication. That's right. Now you, that's but, now but yeah. Um, okay. Yeah. Well, I thought you meant strip club parties like, but now I mean party like parties that are illicit. Okay. Well then, uh, yes, I worked in rock radio for years. Of course there, there were always there. In fact, I know a very exclusive one in Austin. Um, I'm sure it's more prevalent where you are than where yes. I am. Cause you couldn't get away. I mean, that story was in San Jose, San Jose. you know where that is, right? That's up near SF. Yes. Yes. And, and it, you do it in a neighborhood. Come on. You're going to get in trouble. Dude, that's, bullshit. but I assume that's you guys uh, have like more open land, right? Yeah. A lot more open land. Um, you know, there were always, even back in the day and currently there are just, uh, where you can turn them into, you know, number one, they're private residences, but because the amount of land, you know, you can, you, you have to have a certain invitation. There's a certain amount. Um, I will tell you a little story. Um, there is a very exclusive club in Austin that only deals with elitists. The guy that owns this property is the same guy that runs Burning Man. He's got this place. He runs this establishment in Austin, Texas. 
he allows for three parties on Friday, Saturday, Sunday within three hour time spans. You have to be a member or be invited by a member. There is no actual fee. The fee are narcotics. So depending on how exclusive the party is means the higher the level of drugs. So the low end is weed and maybe some pills. You go higher up, you're talking more Coke, more heroin, and a lot All more the stuff. bad things, man. Bad. And let me tell you, the, the girl I know, her son actually DJs at this exclusive club. And the amount of stuff of the people that he's seen in that place, we're talking like certain congressmen, certain uh, Dell, certain high level Dell employees. It is a very, and guess what? It will never get shut down because of the amount of money they're dishing out to Austin PD. I mean, dude, lawyer, wild, right? Judges, Isn't that it's, wild? It's nuts, dude. When it's I right out there in the open for the public, I'm sure oh, yeah. thousands so of people that, know it. Thousands of people. And let me tell you, it is so exclusive. People know it, but they also know it's so incredibly exclusive that if you can somehow get invited to this spot, dude, I almost, when she told me, I almost wanted to go, I almost want to go and put a little camera but then the only way to go in, like, I can't say, well, I know the DJ, you know, friends no, just go, go with one of those hidden spy cams on your, that's what I'm saying. Glasses. I'm going to do the little, the, the Ray-Bans with the, yes. Ooh, now they're you're still too obvious though, man. They really Especially are. when, when the black lights come on, you totally can see the lens in oh, the frame. Man. You're right. I, awesome. Something bad would happen to me. For yeah, sure. I get you need a pin would, in your absolutely. pocket. That's right. The one guy with the pin. Hello. What was your name? For? Again? <laughs> Anybody need a signature? Yes. And I don't do hardcore drugs. So they were would still make me have to bring something, even though I would say, well, I'm with the DJ. Yeah, but where's the blow? Oh, well, I mean, I don't think get out. It's crazy that that's happening. But, you know, it makes all the sense in the world. You know, yes. that's how the world is. That's, that's people how want to party. I just think it's crazy in your world where, you know, high end people show up. I don't I don't think I see that around here because there's too many private parties going on here in Hollywood. You know, but, but it, it's more exclusive. But in your neck of the woods, dude, come on, man. That's the eyes wide shut party. Those are the those are the nutty parties that, you know. That's beyond elite parties, though, right? These, I mean, you could have some, they'll occasionally let some sorority girls or certain type that know somebody who knows somebody. Um, you know, I mean, I don't know if the entrance fee is drugs or, you know, or signing away. Hey, I don't have drugs, but I've got these girls here and they will hook up with anybody because that is something else that is a way to get in. That's how a lot of these sorority girls get it. Uh, you know, I'm just glad I'm an old man now and I don't have to deal with any of that no, trouble. I, was, I love the story so much, but the old, the, the young ex radio rock radio guy in me would have been like, yeah. hell yeah, I'm going to the party. Old, no longer on the radio guy. I'm like, I'm not going. No, man. Now, <laughs> nowadays we show up. Now, nowadays we show up and they think we're the landlord. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Would you like some honey? 